insecticides can be placed into one of three categories. Natural insecticides, synthetic insecticides, or hormone analogs. The term natural insecticides refers to chemicals derived from natural sources, usually plants. These have the longest history of use in pest management. Insecticides derived from natural botanical sources are essentially toxins made by plants that are extracted for use as an insecticide. The chemicals are produced in different plant parts depending on the plant species like the seeds of the neem tree and the flowers of chrysanthemums. Although natural botanical extracts can be very effective insecticides, they are not typically used in large-scale managed ecosystems, as the extraction process is often costly. Natural insecticides usually break down quickly in the environment and need to be reapplied often which also increases the cost of using them. Pyrethrum is a broad spectrum insecticide, which means that it will kill a wide variety of insects. It is obtained from chrysanthemum flowers and contains compounds called pyrethrins, which have low mammalian toxicity. Because they are safe for mammals, these compounds are widely used to control home and garden pests. Nicotine is another example of an early botanical insecticide that is derived, as you probably know, from tobacco plants. For centuries, people have been mixing nicotine and water to spray on plants to kill insect pests. However, due to its toxicity to both insects and mammals, the use of nicotine as a commercial insecticide has been discontinued. The synthetic replacement for nicotine known as neonicotinoids, are fortunately less toxic to humans. Nevertheless, these chemicals can still threaten non-target insects, like bees, as they affect the insect nervous system in a way similar to nicotine, which we'll get into in the next lesson. Botanical insecticides are used frequently as templates for the development of synthetic insecticides. For instance, Synthetic pyrethroids were derived from pyrethrins, just as neonicotinoids are inspired by the natural insecticide nicotine. The mode of action of the synthetic chemicals is generally similar to that of the natural compound. In some cases, however, synthetic insecticides may be more effective against pests than the natural compound. At the same time, synthetic insecticides can be designed to be less toxic to non-target organisms, including humans. Synthetic insecticides are chemical compounds created by humans, rather than extracted from a natural source. Several synthetic insecticides, including DDT, were first developed for widespread use against insect pests of medical importance during World War II, to manage the spread of diseases among troops, including typhus, spread by lice, and malaria, spread by mosquitoes. These compounds were then adopted for widespread use in agriculture and other managed ecosystems. Synthetic insecticides are typically grouped based on their modes of action, meaning the way that they target and disrupt the insect's body. Most synthetic insecticides are neurotoxins that impact the nervous system by either affecting the transmission of a nerve impulse along the axons of neurons or across the synapses between them. As we discussed briefly in Module 3, these toxins are classified either as axonic poisons or synaptic poisons, depending on which part of the nervous system they affect. Axonic poisons are nerve toxins that affect the transmission of action potentials along the neuron, usually by disrupting the balance of sodium and potassium influxes along the cell membrane. Axonic poisons include older insecticides, like chlorinated hydrocarbons, and some more commonly used modern insecticides, like pyrethroids. 
Chlorinated hydrocarbons were the first axonic poisons widely used to target insect pests. The most famous example of this class of insecticide is DDT. DDT was broadly effective against insect pests, but its use was discontinued in most parts of the world because of its high chemical stability in the environment. Furthermore, DDT is fat soluble and accumulates in the fatty tissue of organisms that consume it. The concentration of DDT increases with trophic level in the food chain in a process known as biomagnification. This buildup of the chemical can have adverse effects on many vertebrate species. In humans, exposure to DDT can significantly reduce reproductive success. DDT is also potentially carcinogenic and can increase the risk of cancer in humans. Despite these dangers, DDT is still used for vector control programs within human dwellings in some parts of the world. Another class of axonic poisons are the pyrethroids, synthetic chemicals that mimic pyrethrins. Pyrethroids are fast-acting synthetic insecticides that are highly toxic to insects, but not to vertebrates, meaning that insecticide application is relatively safer. This class of axonic poison keeps sodium channels in the axons open, which interrupts nerve impulse transmission of action potentials. Insects affected by these poisons show an immediate loss of locomotory function, exhibit tremors, and lose control of their nervous systems. Pyrethroids are effective at low doses and unlike DDT, do not persist in the environment. They're also economical to manufacture and are therefore widely available for use. Unlike axonic poisons, Synaptic poisons are neurotoxic insecticides that affect impulse transmission at the synapses, among neurons and between neurons and muscle cells. Organophosphates are a class of synthetic synaptic poisons that inhibit the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, which would normally break down the excitatory neurotransmitter acetylcholine. This leads to the continuous presence of the neurotransmitters in the synapse and the constant stimulation of the postsynaptic acetylcholine receptors in the dendrites. Because of this mode of action, organophosphates cause rapid nerve firing, tremors, and ultimately the death of the insect. Organophosphates are broken down by UV light and so do not accumulate in the environment. Some organophosphates are toxic to vertebrates and can present substantial risk for the insecticide applicator, especially when there is prolonged exposure. Organophosphates are dangerous if ingested from treated plants, inhaled, or if they come into contact with the skin. And so they are not commonly available to home gardeners anymore. Organophosphates are still used in cases that require extremely effective insecticides and have been deployed to kill mosquitoes that transmit West Nile virus in some countries. Malathion, that we introduced in the last lesson, is an organophosphate insecticide. Other commonly used synaptic poisons are the synthetic neonicotinoids, analogs of nicotine. Neonicotinoids mimic the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, but cannot be broken down by acetylcholinesterase. They activate and block postsynaptic receptors leading to similar symptoms of insecticide poisoning as with organophosphates. Neonicotinoids have low mammalian toxicity, but they may be linked to the decline in bees and other pollinators. They are often used to mitigate resistance to other poisons that have different modes of action, something that we will explore in a later lesson. Although this is useful, the potential harm they can cause to beneficial insects 
has resulted in the use of neonicotinoids being banned in some parts of the world. Muscle poisons, as the name suggests, are insecticides that attack muscle cells. These chemicals are important in integrated pest management because they act on a completely different physiological system than traditional neurotoxic insecticides. Anthracylic diamides are a relatively new class of muscle poison that can be used in concert with other techniques to help mitigate the problem of insecticide resistance. One type of anthracylic diamide is the compound chlorantranilaprol. This muscle poison activates receptors that stimulate the release of calcium stored in muscle cells, eventually depleting it. Without calcium, muscle activity is impaired, leading to paralysis, followed by death. This chemical is activated both through physical contact and ingestion, and death occurs quickly in both egg and larval stages. Receptors activated by chlorantranilaprol are only present in insects, meaning that this insecticide has low toxicity for mammals. It also has high specificity with minimal impacts on beneficial organisms such as pollinators, detritivores, and natural enemies, allowing this insecticide to fit very well within IPM programs. Synthetic analogs of insect hormones that regulate molting and metamorphosis can also be used as insecticides for pest management. These analogs are particularly useful because they are often insect specific, meaning that they have negligible effects on non-insect organisms. As such, these hormone analogs are generally safe for humans and other mammals. An example of hormone analog insecticides are juvenile hormone analogs, which interfere with the process of metamorphosis in a developing insect pest. Normally, juvenile hormone levels drop prior to the final larval molt, which triggers the metamorphic molt from larva to pupa. The application of juvenile hormone analogs disrupts this cycle and results in abnormal development, which can be lethal. A larval insect exposed to this chemical may produce an extra, larger instar that may not be able to molt into a reproductively capable adult. This is especially useful in insects where the adult stage is the pest, as in mosquitoes. Juvenile hormone analogs are applied to standing water where mosquito larvae are present, and this prevents them from metamorphosing into the adult stage. Because of its extremely low toxicity in mammals, the World Health Organization has approved methoprene, a juvenile hormone analog, to be used as a mosquito larvicide in drinking water containers, particularly to combat the mosquito-transmitted dengue fever. Ectysteroid molting hormone analogs have also been used to control some insect pests. Like ectysteroids, they bind to molting hormone receptors and initiate the molting process. Unlike natural ectysteroids, however, molting hormone analogs cannot be cleared from the receptors. This prevents the completion of the molting process, meaning larvae and pupae don't finish their molt and die in the process. Methoxyphenazide is an insecticidal ectysteroid mimic that is very effective against a wide range of lepidopteran pests. It interrupts the molting process when the caterpillar ingests the insecticide and also has some impact upon contact. It does not seem to have a detrimental impact on non-target and beneficial insect species, making this a safe alternative to integrate into IPM strategies. Like juvenile hormone analogs, these chemicals bind specifically to insect receptors meaning they have little effect on non-target organisms. Additionally, hormone analogs can be used during a pest outbreak event 
and have predictable mortality, which makes them an effective control tactic. Insecticides come in many shapes and forms, each of which have unique modes of applications and effects on insect pests. In the next video, we discuss the advantages and limitations of these insecticides.